Good morning, everyone. Uh, those of you who do not know me, my name is Kika, and I'm from Ilya State University. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our hosts. We are very happy to have a chance to visit Israel and to have a chance to have this face-to-face -face meeting after uh, the nights we spend in Zoom. And I hope that we will keep this from now on. Um, when, when Ellie offered to present on this session, I thought that maybe, perhaps I, I, I use this 20 minutes to explain what happened in Roger during this uh, emergency remote teaching, uh, what challenges we faced and what, at what stand we developed ourselves. So actually I, I will try to explain what happened, but uh, before that, I, I, um, I would like to start with this. Uh, graph. Perhaps some of you remember this. When our project started back in 2020, we conducted a survey. We asked our students a few questions. And one of the questions in that survey was uh, if uh, we, we were interested if online learning uh, made our students, like if they feel comfortable with online learning. And at that time, we, we asked them to we use this grade and five means that they are happy. One means that they, are, they do not like it. And as you can see, the majority, almost like 80%, 75% answered that this is not the way they like to study. So they dislike online learning. And there was something that we, uh, we conducted this survey in, in all three institutions um, that, that are participating in this project. And at that time, we started to analyze this. Why, 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 what was the reason that we got this answer? Uh, and we saw that the main reason was uh, because the life, the, the whole life was changed, the way of our lives, because everything was moved totally into online and students were not able to, to uh, uh, go out and have the ordinary life. So they disliked this, not uh, uh, especially the distance education, but everything that was conducted online. But that was in the beginning of uh, pandemic 2020, as I mentioned. And then um, like every university, every higher education institution in Georgia moved on uh, this online learning and uh, different institutions had different challenges. We have colleagues all over the Georgia and we know them, we hear the, their stories. Um, and I, I just listed here the main challenges from the students' perspective. Uh, we spoke uh, recently, like the last two days, we, we hear a lot about the Israeli students, but I guess the challenges are more or less the same in our case. Uh, first of all, we have this biggest problem was the accessibility to personal computers uh, and even smartphones. We had students, especially coming from the minority groups who had only one smartphone in the whole family. And there were three or four children. They had school at the same time. They had classes at the same time and only one smartphone. Also, the internet coverage was kind of problem in that case. Um, in the rural, rural uh, uh, peripheries or regions, in different regions, uh, the coverage is not that good. So sometimes it happened that not everyone were able to get this connection and attend the classes. Um, yeah, so the, then also we, we uh, our students have problem with, with uh, turning their cameras and using their cameras, but be not because they do not have it and they are not functioning, but because uh, they are shy to share their space. And we do completely understand that uh, um, because they are living with their families. You know, Georgia is like uh, a different traditional uh, space, we can say in this way. So people are living with their parents, grandparents in the same house. So we are not moving in our <coughs> early ages. So uh, it might happen that three generations live in the same house. And sometimes students do not have the space, um, their, their, their private space to uh, prepare for classes or to use um, the space in the separate room to, to, come, to attend the classes. So this was a problem. And 
and for this reason, the majority do not use their their, their, their cameras. Um, also, the uh, yeah. So this these are the uh, challenges that the academic staff uh, mentioned. You know, uh, on the one hand, it was like easy for, for, for the faculty members to conduct the classes from home. But on another hand, it, it was like it took all of their time, all of their effort, and it, it required a lot to prepare to, to change, to make the change from traditional like, way of conducting classes to, to online classes because um, at first, I remember that the majority of our academic staff, they started using video conferencing tools and they, they thought that this was uh, enough. So online class for them, for the majority of, of, the, of academic staff, uh, meant that you, you have to conduct um, class via Zoom and that's it. And they were doing this as uh, like they, they were explaining some theory. So it was only one person speaking and they, they, they were not interaction as well. So um, this, is, this was also a, a problem. Um, yeah, so uh, these were the challenges at, at the very beginning. I remember that um, uh, in the beginning of March, in, in the beginning of pandemic, everyone was, was talking about what is the way to conduct, like, to move into the online space. But after three weeks, so it, it took two or three weeks that everyone found this way. Um, but after that, then everyone started to speaking about what is the, um, what is the way to assess students. And I will, I will speak about it later as well. So these are some, some challenges that faculty members say that this is time consuming. So you need to, a lot of time to select resources. You need time to design activities, and uh, the activities differ from field to field, from group to group. As you mentioned, if if uh, if there is a bigger group, then you need to navigate differently. If you are lucky to have ten or fifteen students, it, it is much more easier, I would say. But yeah, so the, the there is a lot that you have to take into account. Um, uh, yeah, and, and then after we moved on this uh, assessment part, the biggest challenge uh, was checking because we faced this very uh, dramatically, at least in, in Georgia, uh, that our, we were not, uh, uh, we could not guarantee that our students were doing their assignments and there was not someone behind the computers. Even if we asked them to turn their cameras, even if we ask them to, in, in some cases, use two cameras and etc. So cheating was one of the biggest problem. Um, but later we also, so, so the academics have mentioned that uh, lacking motivation, but we, we all speak about the motivation in students, but I would say that this also refers to motivation in, in faculty members to, to move from class to class, I mean, to, to sit at the same room for, from the very beginning, from the early morning till the evening and conduct classes in Zoom. That was something that, uh, that is connected to the motivation as well. Um, yeah, and, and the last one is attitude toward the learning. And I, I, as I remember it, on Monday, someone also mentioned this, that some students do not consider it to be a serious and important. I guess it was something related to some, someone mentioned this to uh, when they speak about the Arabic students. So this is something that happens in Georgia as well. So uh, um, they, the, the, the majority of our students think that if uh, the class is online, then it's not that important. It's not that it, it is not something that they can get something from. So yeah, this is what we heard uh, after a year uh, the pandemic started. So we, we are not able to get back to the university until now. Our spring semester starts next week actually, and this, is, this will be the very first time we, we are getting back to the university, but still not fully. Uh, the university offers uh, hybrid methods. So it's up to students. They can choose if they want to attend the classes 
uh, on site or they, they can um, they can be online and this this is something that uh, surprisingly that happened um, that our, our students at Ilya State University has already choose their subject so they have scheduled and it turned out that the majority almost 60 percent of our students <coughs> now prefer to study online they do not wish to come at the university if you remember that in the beginning of pandemic so the majority said this is not something that we like but now they even the university says that it's now you can get back they they prefer to stay online and this is i guess something that we need to uh, in our case we need to think about how to use that in order to enhance the digital digital competencies and digital infrastructure yeah, so uh, let, let me get back quickly to the academic misconduct and the cases because that was the biggest challenge, and not only in in uh, in in our case, but uh, from from everywhere else, from 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 my colleagues, what I have heard. Although the, there is not, it is not an output of the research, so this is not a research conducted, but uh, this is some fresh. Uh, thought that I, I, I have from my colleagues, um, we noticed that uh, um, we noted that the variety of the misconduct, the types of the academic misconduct was increased. Even if the majority of the institutions had some sanctions, had the policies on place, and they are subscribed to plagiarism detection software, still um, that was the biggest uh, challenge. First of all, and I listed a few different types of uh, misconduct that was uh, frequently seen in, in our practice. First of all, that, that was the social media. Uh, in, in Georgia, the major, majority of the students or people are using Facebook as the number one social, social media. They quickly create the groups, I mean, students, they, quick, they, they create the chats and they have all that Oh, they they get their classmates uh, in in these chats, and when the exam starts, and then they are starting to share information with these groups and chats. So uh, uh, this was something that uh, they, they use also the WhatsApp chats to, to share the answers, for example, or they directly make a screens of the quizzes and then share it very quickly. So, yeah. Also, the, the another type was an authorized collaboration, if we can call it in this way. So it means that they ask support to their friends, family members, um, maybe former teachers. I remember that one of my colleagues who is actually teaching German language, uh, she told me the story that some student from another university told her that I will pay you some amount of money if you write an exam for me. Uh, so that, that also happened. Uh, yeah, so uh, the contract cheating, you, I remember that when I was a student 15 years ago, maybe there was also a contract cheating, but cases of contract cheating, I remember ladies uh, like standing in front of the university and offered us some, some this ad advertisement in, in these little papers but now this moved into the online space so you can see different facebook groups directly offering you uh this assignment like uh, five georgian live that assignment 15 live and etc the master thesis this kind of thing and they offer yeah they offer different they offer the whole, um, uh, I mean, different types of the assessment that existed. They even offer support when taking a test. They can write the test. They can sit in behind the computer and they can help you to uh, pass the oral, oral exam, oral presentation, etc. Uh, yeah, and, and the final, this is uh, the way that, uh, that the, the one of the thing that we noticed was that our students started so quickly integrated into the uh, world and they started using the guides that exist in the YouTube or in different social media um, uh, the, the, and the videos that uh, demonstrate how to avoid plagiarism uh, under, under some, some detection systems. So that was 
it's something that we we noticed. So yeah, these are the cases that we uh, identified during this time. I mean, recent recent two years. Uh, but the list is even longer. We cannot name it. Like that, there is uh, hundreds of different cases that that we met. And uh, from from the university perspective, now what we are doing, we we want to accumulate all those cases to in order to 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 have some. Um, I wouldn't say the sanctions, but at least we we have to be familiar with that. Um, okay. So yeah, and. and um, the, the the main question uh, of, of this session how, is how how the Georgian higher education institution went through this process, and I would say that uh, first of all the academic <coughs> stuff. I, I mentioned that we it took us only uh, two or three weeks to move into uh, online space. That was really quick. And we didn't didn't have any other choice. That was something that we had to do. And the universities did not had any. Uh, I mean, using some tools was not uh, mandatory. So the administration said in each in university said that do whatever you can do. So if you are having a Zoom, then you can use Zoom uh, sessions. If you're using whatever google hangouts you can use that uh, if you're familiar with the teams you can have that or in the beginning i, I remember that a few of my colleagues who had five or six students in the groups they were using um facebook messenger and they conducted the classes via facebook messenger so that was in the very beginning but uh, what helped uh, us a lot was the uh, practice or being or, or the way we participate into different Erasmus Plus projects like Love Distance. We at uh, Ilya State University and in, in other partnering in Georgia as well. We we are a good uh, we, we had a good um, uh, practice of participating in in different uh, Erasmus Plus uh, capacity building projects and within this project. Um, they, 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 we, we had a chance to attend trainings, to conduct trainings in um, blended learning methods, in active learning, and different types of uh, their possibilities that exist. And somehow our academic staff was prepared to make this change very quickly. Um, I have to mention that we, uh, in Georgia, there was, a, according to local legislation rules, uh, you could not conduct fully online classes before 2020. So, um, so we we trained our staff in and we tried to promote blended learning rather than fully online classes. And um, and and now that was also well. Uh, but I I would like to um, yeah the, the final slide is like uh, the most important is to review what we have done to reflect it and to understand uh, that we also made some mistakes and what are these mistakes somehow to reflect on that because um, as I've mentioned that was the very first time the whole educational system higher educational system in Georgia was able to have some practice with distance education with online learning that was the fir first time and now as we are getting back to the university i think it will uh, we will start analyzing the practice we will start analyzing what we have done and where did we make mistakes because we had a lot of mistakes and uh, yeah this is something that we should use as a lesson to to uh, study from um, and i really hope that uh, the project outputs and outcomes will support in this way as well uh, to, to design the, the best solution for that. Okay, so that was all I wanted to share. Thank you so much. Any questions? I think uh, I think we, we in Israel um, deal with the same situation, very similar situation, mm -hmm. what you uh, describe here. And I have one question. 
<laughs> you mentioned you mentioned the, the the motivation. Yes. That changed a little bit in the middle. What made what changed this motivation? So what what 